Welcome in everyone, Ty Bartell with another player profile interview as we head into Camel Soup City as the Red Devils, one of the premier stars, Kendall Brunn, getting to talk to one of the junior captains. And Kendall, you've really bursted on the scene. This Camel Red Devils team continuing to get better year in and year out, 14 and 8 on the season. You have over 300 kills. I mean, point to the point to the success that you've had this season. What do you attribute all your success to? Um, my team and a lot of our coaching staff um, has got us to where we are now. So we talked with uh, we talked with Coach prior to the start of the season, and we can always talk. Coach Allen is is a great guy, and I mean, the praise is of. of always been saying about him about what he's done with this camel program from a player perspective what can you say about coach allen and what he does so well as a coach and why he has been so influential to this program um he's always pushing us to be uncomfortable because um like before we stayed in our comfort zone and we had no results like beforehand and now he pushes us to be better as like not only players but people like to get us to grow closer together as a team, not rely on ourselves. So what is the work that you had to put in not only in during the season, but in the off season, I'm sure as well to not only have the 300 plus kills, but to be able to do it with the accuracy that you've done at 45% kill percentage over a 350 hit percentage. I mean, these are, these are great numbers uh, accurate as well what kind of work goes into that and what is behind the scenes that maybe people don't see for you to be able to produce those kind of numbers? Um, club. We do a lot of club, um, jump stretches, staying after practice, just the practices like by themselves too. Cause we do a lot at practice. I've been doing a lot with hitting at practice cause I'm not a passer. I don't play in the background. So, um, other than that, I just do hitting a lot, the accu spike, um, working with the setters like one on one. So in your experience with volleyball, when did you first find yourself falling in love with the sport and wanting to keep pursuing the sport, get better at it and, and put those hours into it? Um, sophomore year, because beforehand, um, it wasn't really taken seriously. Like freshman year was like, yes, it's like serious now because I was playing on varsity as a freshman, but like we, we weren't that good. So then I really don't like losing. So then it was like, now, like we have to be better because we want to win every game and we want to show everybody like the work and the time that we put in. So do you guys, has there been discussions internally with the team about wanting to kind of create this culture for Camel and kind of turn this tide around and have this be known as a winning successful volleyball program again. We have that discussion with every game, every practice, like before everything, because um, it's like we're now that we're winning, it's like, yes, like we're winning now, but like we should win more, like we could be better. So it's just like, um, like getting us out of the mindset that like right now is like where we want to be like, because we want to keep moving forward in our play. For you, you you went from sophomore to junior as well. So you're an upperclassman. More is expected of you already as, as a teammate. But you're also a captain. So a lot more is expected of you when, when you have that kind of role as well on the team. What have you learned in your leadership roles about, so I guess, things that have worked and things that maybe don't work as well from you your perspective as a leader too? Like what are your biggest points of growth as a leader and what have you found out works for you? Um, For me, I realized that just because I'm the captain, it doesn't put me on like a higher place than like the other players. Like I still have to know, like I'm also a part of this team. Like I also need my team is like a big thing. Cause um, being like a lot of people watch me and stuff. And like, if I have like an off game, I feel like it's like on me, but knowing that like I have my team and I can also be picked up is like a big part of like being captain. Cause like you realize like how much your team needs you and how much you also need your team. 
So if a younger girl comes up to you, and I'm sure there's plenty of them watching, watching the success you're having, but if a younger girl wants to know how they can get into your shoes one day, what is some advice you would tell them to, to find that success in the sport? Um, work and confidence. Um, we I put in a lot of like hard work and time. And like still now I'm working on confidence. Like it's all about believing in yourself because everyone else believes in me. But then there's times when like, I don't think that I can do something or I don't think like I'm good enough to do something. And um, that's, I've had a couple games where that's like been a downfall. So I would tell other people or younger people to believe in yourself and what you can do. In this season, too, we talked about it. You guys successful, 14-8 and eight record, not too shabby at all. But what I, one thing I want to highlight, in recent weeks, dating back to September 27th, you guys have now won three five-set matches. And talking about that, three five-set matches in a row, you've had a few more on the season. But talking about those experiences and going deep into those kind of five-set matches and coming out victorious – do you think that that's going to play as an advantage for you guys? Or do you think those kind of experiences are beneficial for you guys prior to the, uh, the start of the tournaments? And if so, how? Um, I do believe they are. It shows that no matter where we are, that we can come back as a team. Um, it also shows us like how hard we worked like to get to where we are right now. Um, and it also shows that like, even if you start bad, that there's somewhere like you can go with the bad that you do. Um, it also shows that like our team, we we are strong together and that we realize it over time. And through all of these games, like our five set games, it showed us that we can like do it. You guys got the win a couple of days ago too against Cheney. That was the last game of the season. So 14 and eight is the record, but you already know your tournament draw. It's going to be United uh, uh, Wednesday to October 19th. So just five days away. What are some of the discussions you guys are having with coach Allen too, and the discussions you're having amongst the team ahead of this tournament stretch? Cause we know everyone wants to go on a deep run and anyone can too. It all starts with uh, that first match. Um, we've been talking a lot about, our communication, working as a team, working through all of our problems that we've been having. Um, also not being content with where we are. Like we've been learning to run stuff in practice, even though it's new to us and that we've been doing it in recent games. It's like not to be okay where you are. So our recent practices we've been working on learning to progress in ourselves as a team, individually, and all of our skills. When you hear uh, the cheers from the crowd, because I've gotten a chance to see a couple of Camel games, and I mean, not only just volleyball, I mean, back in basketball too, boys basketball, I mean, this is a community that brings the energy, they bring uh, they bring the uh, the loudness to the gym for sure, and they make sure they're heard. What kind of uh, what kind of energy does that give you guys on the court too? Does Do you feel the energy vibe, and do you feel pumped up too when the community's getting loud and proud for you guys? Um, we love our student section. Um, it makes us very excited. Um, and it, it helps us a lot when we play also, cause it's like, oh my goodness, like we have fans and it's actually like, it's sometimes it's kind of scary cause we're not used to it. Like now that they've like been there with us this whole season, it's like exciting. Being a, being a winning team, too, definitely draws those people in. So you guys, uh, team success, too, has certainly brought that crowd in. We talked about you being a leader, and we talked about you taking those steps as a leader. But I kind of want to go back to when you first started in this team. Who were some of the girls you were looking up to and kind of influenced and served as a role model to you and shaped you as a leader? Um, our former players from last year, Courtney King and Adriana, they helped us a lot with like building up our leadership skills and building to like where we need to be right now. Like um, I worked with them a lot last year because we knew that our seniors were leaving. And so then like we have, we have one senior too. Um, and so we knew that like, obviously one of the juniors will have to like step up and like, cause it's a lot of juniors and like younger people on our team. So we knew that one of us would have to step up and be ready to take charge. So um, I worked with them a lot. Outside of the sport of volleyball, what are some of your interests and in? what do you what do you like to do when uh, you're not on the court? Um, I like I like to paint. Um, I like to read and I love sleeping. 
<laughs> Sleeping's always a great one. I, I could get down with that one too. Talking about the paintings though, is there a specific type of painting that you like? Is it abstract, non-abstract? Is there a certain type of subject you like to paint? Um, I mostly paint cartoons. I like painting cartoons because I just like happy and like free stuff. You ever paint uh, cartoons of you playing volleyball? You ever do like, volleyball cartoons? You know, you don't want to dive into that. <laughs> and a lot of painters never want to paint themselves, too, it seems like, anytime you ask them art-wise. Uh, but looking at those those kind of hobbies, too, have you seen any kind of, I guess, future plans for you? I mean, what are some of your future goals, whether it's inside the sport of volleyball, outside the sport? Uh, what are some future goals that you have or some future things you want to accomplish? Um. I would like to go to college. Um, um, I want to play volleyball, I think. I'm sure. But um, I also want to be – I want to be a therapist or a financial manager. I like working with people. So, Is there any specific colleges that you're looking at right now or have interest in? Not yet. Um, not yet. But in saying that, then, I guess, what are some of the things, I guess, what are good selling points for you? I guess, whether it's a volleyball coach, if you're looking to go volleyball route, or in, in a program, too, like like therapists, if you want to get a degree in that, what are some things you want to look for in your professors, in your coaches, too, that uh, that will draw you to that school or to that program? Um, I want to go to a school that has a good volleyball coach. Um. I want to like a welcoming environment, like so the students, like a good connection with the professors and like all around, no matter if it's like volleyball, coaches and me, professors and me, students and me. And um, also I want to bring my cat. So the cat's always the big one, too. Who's the cat's name? You got to shout out the cat. His name is George. George the cat, I love it too. Is uh is George a part of the uh, the pregame routine? Is he is he part of what gets you guys wins? No, 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 not at all. Do you have any of um, any of those superstitions, or do you have any pregame uh, pregame superstitions, or any kind of uh, things you can't do or you have to do prior to a game? Well, because I wear contacts, I put my contacts in the second set of JV at fifteen points every single game, so. Yeah, if you have it timed out. If it's if it's off like that, if, or has it ever been off? I guess is a good question. Yeah, it feels kind of weird. <laughs> you know, you don't like it too. Don't like the vibe it gives you. Oh uh, man, what is um? What are the uh? What are the meal that the meal? What is the meal that uh, you go to for a big win after? What's the uh, what's the go to meal? Um, I love spaghetti. Spaghetti and too. Our team likes to eat ice cream together. So, ice cream from Dairy Queen. What's the what's the go to order for you there? Um, I like a Sunday, a strawberry Sunday. Strawberry Sunday always. I could get down with it too. The banana split sometimes I'll mess with it too, just because it has the strawberries as well. So I get that. I could get down with the fruit and the ice cream for sure. Well, Kendall, you guys have had a great season this year. No doubt you guys are going to be set up with a great playoff matchup on Wednesday against United. I know you're going to need the crowd there, but I want to give you a chance to shout out the people that have been there for you and uh, the people you couldn't do this journey without. Um. My setter, setter, Carla Ramirez, um, all, well, basically our whole team, because I'm friends with all of them, the coaching staff, my mom, and my best friend, Marima. As you could catch the Lady Red Devils as they take on the United Golden Eagles Wednesday, October 19th in a playoff matchup. Kendall Brunn will be there and all of the Red Devils. This has been Ty Bartell's player profile interview with Camel Memorial Red Devils star, Kendall Brunn.